friends welcome back or welcome to our channel it's serena from the falco family and we are making our way along this little curriculum series we have arrived at my fifth graders curriculum picks and i'm just gonna walk you through what we have been using for the year we start our day with bible studies so i'm gonna start this video off with what we are using for bible this pocket size bible by crossway that she'll be using in the same way as her brothers basically somewhat of a scripture slash prayer bible for each of the kids for them to be able to actually tab and uh, keep track of the scriptures that they are committing to memory i also like this one of course because it comes in their color code and y'all know i like that um but also because it has just the basics in there the overview of the books of the bible the poetry books it has the ten commandments it has the miracles of jesus a dictionary a reading plan for kids timelines and maps all the things a kid's bible should have in it so the words of jesus are written in red i love the gilding on each one of these bibles hers is a nice hot pink so that is going to be the start of her curriculum set up for Bible studies. Um, we, like I said in the previous videos, I did purchase the biggest story curriculum set. Um, I bought all of the pieces to the set and just decided on just kind of like sitting with it for a little bit and figuring out how I was going to divvy it up and make it personal to each one of them. So in this case, I am more so focusing on the resources in the kit, what works for her best. So I am using what you see here is the verse cards from Genesis to Revelation, uncovering the story of the Bible. There are 104 cards in all, and we've been using them as memory work, story prompts, prayer starters, and actually, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but your girl loves a good card set. We find so many fun ways to use them, and they are even better when they come with a sturdy box to store them in. We just kind of find whatever creative way we can use these verse cards. Next up, she has the same activity book that her brother has. Uh, it just goes story by story and has a corresponding um, crossword word search, coloring pages, just gives them something to put their hands to and a little activity to work on as we are reading the stories, watching the videos, whatever the case may be. So I really like how they are laid out and I try not to, you know, make them stick to coloring a page or um, working on a particular activity um, at any given time. We just fit it in when it works. And when we have other things that we're focused on, we set it aside until they want to jump back in it again. So this is the biggest story activity book. Uh, along with that, she also has the coloring book. For my seventh graders, he has both of the same things, but for his, they are included in the same book. So I'm not sure if you noticed that or not on the last video, um, but like I said, the activity book and the coloring book come with the actual uh, curriculum set um, and it is in one book. So for my fifth graders, I just purchased um, the two separately so she could also do the same things, the activities and the coloring along with the rest of the stories. So the big difference with her version of the curriculum is that we are using the actual storybook Bible. Um, with my seventh graders, as you saw before, we were using the curriculum books that lay out lessons. But for her, I just want her to be able to walk through the stories by reading the storybook. It kind of gives me the same feel or vibe as um, when we had the graphic edition of the Bible, I can't think of the exact name of it, but um, my son loved that storybook Bible um, and he really ate up all of those Bible stories in such a great way. So I imagine this being a similar type of thing for my daughter. Um, for her to be able to just read through the storybook cover to cover, get the complete purpose. Um, and of course, the illustrations, 
I mean, I really couldn't ask for better. They're more abstract in nature, and I really enjoy that. So I have shared before how I enjoy devotionals. I love that there's so many to choose from. They get that exposure to the scripture. And I particularly love this one, the Fearless Faith Devotional, the activities that it has all sprinkled in and throughout. They are just the cutest things. I actually didn't even notice that there were activities until we cracked it open. I had purchased it well before she was ready to move along into this one. So it was a pleasant surprise to see the activities, making a time capsule, making a bird feeder, an outdoor scavenger hunt. It just has the sweetest little activities that are sprinkled in and throughout the devotional. And I really can't wait till she fully gets all the way through it and see how her faith and her prayer life has grown. Let's move into history, (laughs) y'all. History is so easy for us to manage, especially in the earlier years, in the elementary years. Um, Honestly, we just always have focused on nice, robust, healthy conversations. Um, I guess you could say a lot of our history is coupled with critical thinking, Uh, And we have loved that for a long time. Uh, For her, we are using the set of books, The Story Of. We've had them for a few years. And if if you guys have been around here for a while, you know how much I love to exhaust resources. Um, I like to hold on to them for as long as possible. And I just feel like the nostalgia and familiarity that the kids going through the resources over and over again, and then just expanding upon them, going down more and more rabbit trails. It just, I I don't know, I just think it's a really healthy way for them to explore and research different people in history and events in history. So in this case, she's gonna be using the story of books You know I love a good history resource that has a timeline, a nice little glossary that has an awesome appendix in the back. These are all things that we use and expand upon to create even more robust um, research around our history topics. So, so far she has is working her way through uh, the Constitution. She has explored the Founding Fathers. So we'll take those books that she has read individually in the past and we'll couple them or group them together and start to explore um, different ideals. It just really works so good for us. They have think tank questions um, throughout the books, making timeline cards and adding them to our history timeline is always a thing. Completing our printable research reports using these books. We add videos that we found, different documentaries. It's just a very solid, easy way for us to work through history subject matter together. Um, I also use any other biography type books. I love this one in particular. She spoke 14 women who raised their voices and changed the world. Voices like Dr. Maya Angelou, Temple Grandin, Sonia Sotomayor. I loved this resource in particular because it opened my eyes to a new way to add to our research work and being able to attach audio voices really sparked my creativity when thinking of how to engage the kids in their studies. So for science, we are sticking with Apologia. She expressed that she wanted to use something similar, um, set up similarly to what her brothers were using. So we went ahead and took a look at astronomy. She worked her way through reviewing the outer planets. Um, She made many books locating the constellations. Um, They had a lot of fun activities that she was able to kind of put her hands to and work her way through on her own. Uh, And she really enjoyed it from vocabulary crossword puzzles. She worked her way through it and was diligent to finish it. Um, So that was the first time that we had tried uh, that particular curriculum for her. 
and that was at her request. I also had an activity guide that went along with it, the sun, um, using a magnifying glass, Mercury, uh, making craters, Venus, uh, learning how radar is used. Uh, she just really explored all the different um, faces of astronomy and it was perfect timing because we actually ended off uh, with the solar eclipse. So everything just kind of laid, you know, fell in line and it was really pretty great. And now I am super excited because we get to move into botany. It is botany season and hopefully I'll share all about how we're building that in the future. To my main source of core curriculum for science, I have DK's Help Your Kids with Science. I have several of these in this series and I really enjoy them just because they're just so helpful um, when I want to establish a core uh, curriculum and I really need just a good foundation and maybe it's really helpful for me because I'm more of a visual person. Cells that work, waste materials, movement, sensitivity, reproduction, disease and immunity, understanding the periodic table, chemical reactions, lab equipment, polymers, gravity, pressure, heat, heat transfer, optics, electronics, the earth, the solar system, stars and galaxies, all of those things. It just really helps me to break down into pieces to really get her input as to what she wants to move on to um, studying next and then go from there. Let's talk language arts. She really enjoys the good and the beautiful uh, using their language arts as a workbook. Um, so we take the pieces of curriculum, which I have really enjoyed using from time to time because it's just so simple for us to uh, choose to use the parts of the curriculum that we really enjoy and discard the things that we don't necessarily need. And she really, really enjoys all of the illustrations and the way that they organize and map out the content, the editing portions. She also really enjoys the sentence diagramming. Um, she's We usually pass on the personal reading and things. She really enjoys the grammar portions of this curriculum, grammar in general. So she's working her way through this language arts and literature level five course book, using it as a workbook. Then we're moving on to the infographic guide to grammar. I have several of these in this series and I really enjoy them. <laughs> this one is no different from parts of speech, working our way through nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, verb tenses, writing style and common mistakes, um, identifying purpose and audience, active and passive voice, slang, um, just being able to look at all of the breakdowns visually is so helpful for us to focus in on the foundations of each grammar component and then take it from there. Uh, we usually like to find creative ways to get in practice on each of the, the grammar work. And most of the time it comes with identifying um, examples of uh, active and passive voice or paragraph structure or foreign words and phrases, slang and dialect by identifying these um, examples inside of books that we are currently, that she is currently reading. So we like this infographic guide to grammar a lot. <laughs> Some examples of things that we are reading um, we work our way through classics like um, Anne of Green Gables and Heidi. She actually pays so much attention to the way the books are organized, how they're laid out, um, how they're structured, all of those things. She's looking at all of the details, the pictures that are included. She's just really paying attention to and focusing in on all of the little things that are involved in literary works of others and creating literary work of her own. 
um, one of the things which I'll share in the future more about uh, is Grammarly. She's obsessed. (laughs) So it's a way that she can really just kind of go off on her own, do her own thing and edit her own work as she moves forward without having to get as stuck as she has been in the past. So she has been enjoying that. So a combination of her working her way through her favorites like the Marvelers and the Map Makers, she is just reading like there's no tomorrow. (laughs) And we want to encourage that and keep that going. And I'm there to help her identify these elements of grammar um, that she knows and loves and help her to understand the purpose of the elements and how she can use it to convey um, the message that she wants to convey and how authors have used it to convey the messages that they want to convey. So it's really a fun process for me uh, watching her enjoy writing and enjoy grammar um, is really just been so much fun. Fun fact, my girl loves a mystery. <laughs> I've always been a fan of finding uh, stories that really pique their interest. And I love being able to find stories that make mention of the things that we're currently studying. In this case, main character Cordelia uses a telescope from under her bed, finds a map, with a secret compartment. And she says, I have to discover where this leads. (laughs) Those are things that I really love to use to help her go down these just fun, imaginative, adventurous paths using the the subject matter that we are currently studying and just making it come alive. I know it seems and sounds extra and that's because it is. Let's now move on to math. First up, we have another Good and the Beautiful Math 5 course book. Again, it's the same as the language arts. She has enjoyed and continues to use their um, math levels as workbooks. We keep what we want to work on. We gloss over the things that we don't need to work on. Uh, They have videos that you can access using the QR codes on the pages. I mean, it's just done so well. Next up, I have another one of those Help Your Kids uh, editions of DK. This is math. Uh, They walk through numbers, geometry, trigonometry, algebra, statistics, probability, Again, this is one of those super core curriculums um, that I have because it's basically outlining and giving me a jump start or head start on any um, different area of math that we're working our way through. So no matter what I use to try to um, teach or help her study certain subject matter, in this case in maths, I always like to reference a resource like this. It really helps me. Someone who has been out of school for several of years, um, it helps me to bring it back to memory and to consider different creative ways for me to either explain or for us to establish um, more practice work. Along with those two resources is the School of Numbers. You guys know you come across those resources that are just so cute and so chock full of information. I can't own them all, but the ones that I do decide to purchase and add to our library are the ones that I'm going to exhaust. In this case, resources like this, I feel like are golden because they've already broken down into parts, the curriculum that you can work your way through. Of course, they start off with the basics, and that's okay because these are the foundations of math that should be as strong as possible. Then they add in the Fibonacci sequence, probability, coordinates, and then on top of that, they've made it fun and creative and exciting. And so who am I not to just add to? (laughs) Like, why not give her a letter of acceptance to the starship Infinity Astro Academy. (laughs) 
I really enjoy this book. It's so cute. And then adding in picture books, of course, is a fave. I like these because then she gets to relate this math to real people and what they can do with these maths. So I feel like this is a whole approach to considering new subject matter, strengthening foundational materials, and just making it fun from day to day. I also love the wealth of information that is in the back of these books, outlining important dates and other resources that we can add to examples from mathematicians in real life that she is introduced to through picture books, all the way to biographies and autobiographies. In this case, um, this one by Katherine Johnson, Reaching for the Moon. I do think that it's important to include real life examples of how to use newly introduced subject matter. It helps them to see that these things that they are working really hard on understanding are worthwhile. So yeah, that's how I think of and consider curriculum, how I pull it together and how I consider the core that we use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.